Namaste and welcome. Today, it really is my very special pleasure to introduce a very dear friend, a very inspiring person, uh, Subhash Gupta Ji, who is a very successful business entrepreneur and now has put his full time into philanthropy. He's a very dear friend from Texas and has been very actively involved along with his wife in phil philanthropic efforts like Ekal Vidyalaya, where he's a board of advisors, Seva USA, and several other initiatives. But his newest initiative now is that he has founded the Texas Hindu Campsite. And uh, it is a program that has been running for 40 years, but there are many special things happening this year. Subhashji, welcome to Lokwani. Namaste. Namaste, Ranjani ji. Thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> and it is, uh, it is a very historic moment for us. We just finished, uh, in fact, we have not finished completely, but almost finished the construction of the campsite. And Tuesday, coming Tuesday, just two days later, we will start having 200 youth from nine years to 14 years of age be there for almost whole week, six nights. They will be living there and they will have the camping activity, which we have been conducting for past 39 years. So for past 39 years, we have been using the rented campsites in other places. And unfortunately, we had to stick by their rules. All those campsites belong to either Jews or Christians, and we had to abide by their rules. Some of them won't allow us to cook food. Some of them would allow us to cook food. Some of them have their own conditions. So now we have a campsite of our own that Hindus can call home. Finally, we have found a home for our youth camps. And in addition to youth camps, there can be so many other activities at this campsite, Hindu conventions, Hindu vivaha, all sorts of things. <laughs> yes, yes. Spiritual retreats, meditation, yoga retreats. Dr. Nagendraji of S of S Vyasa, Swami Vivekanand Yoga mm -hmm. University, he has already done a yoga meditation retreat here. That's so at unlimited potential. Yeah. It's a beautiful place with sleeping capacity of 240 people. Wow. That is really special. Special, I think, and to have such a large space, of course, staying over is for 240 people. But I think uh, during the day, if you want to hold a convention, you can have a much larger uh, gathering. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And I know that being Houston, I think the facility can be used pretty much year around, probably, because your weather is always beautiful. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, <laughs> is it a beautiful indoor outdoor facility? Like, do you have like a a room and you know things like that where people may want to gather and have yeah. larger conventions is there anything yeah, that you so it is on 37 acres of land uh, beautiful wooded area trees and we have tried to minimize the damage to trees so we have a huge multi-purpose hall with the dining capacity of 300 people wow and uh, it can be used for multi-purposes with a stage, we can have performances and things like that. Yeah. And a uh, uh, large kitchen that we can cook food. We have a huge volley, um, volleyball court, covered volleyball court, no, basketball court and volleyball courts and swimming pool and eight cabins for the sleeping of the kids, yeah. 30 youth or 30 adults each cabin. So that gives us 240 along with a lot of sports facilities and grounds, camping grounds. Wow. So we can so really have a lot of fun while having 
our own type of food our own type of cultural activities is, is that why you decided to buy your own little property and then make it a hindu campsite yes so actually the main reason we decided to buy this thing because we were doing these youth camps for last 39 years and we had to hunt every year for a campsite and it became so bad that we had to bus the children five hours for five, six hours to farther than San Antonio and Austin, which was ridiculous to bus the kids six hours away. And also the demand was too much. We could take only 200 kids maximum and demand we used to have applications from 600 people. So as a result, the camp would fill, registration would be over in five, six minutes. So fast that even one sister might get in and brother doesn't get in or wow. vice versa. So siblings even couldn't get in. So it was that bad and that is where people started calling me can you get my son or daughter into <laughs> camp? And I said, I don't, uh, I don't know why you think I have any push or pull that I can get your son and daughter in the camp. Yeah. But since I have been president of Vishwa Hindu Parishad, so I thought they, they thought since they are run under the Vishwa Hindu Parishad. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I'm not currently VHP president. Yeah, right. And the point was that there was no push or pull. There's no place, right? Like, I mean, that there's was no the... place. Yeah, exactly. So why? So this think... is why I got, I, and then I talked to a lot of kids and, and those kids were full of praise. What transformation it makes. These youth camps have made transformative changes in their lives. And kids went on and on and on that, how they develop the friendships, lifelong friendships, they learn discipline, they learn self-confidence, they become leaders. Many of them have become leaders, like our Amit Mishra, Rishi Butada, Raki Sharani, so many of them, who were very, very shy kids coming into the camp. So it develops all sorts of uh, leadership uh, qualities. So a lot of kids now come to us that because of your camp, now we are so and so. We so it gives you a tremendous good feeling. So this is the main reason we wanted to impart this thing to as many kids as possible. So six hundred kids, we already had the demand, and if we even if we advertise a little bit. My guess is we would have 2,500 youth. Oh and this is a very good opportunity for the youth to learn about their culture, mm. about the Hindu value system, a little bit about our, who we are, what we stand for, besides other things, discipline and those things. So in these camps, what do you think are the top three things that uh, children gain from that? Uh, and what do you teach? What are the top three goals of these camps and what do they gain from that? So basically the metal methodology is simple. Khel khel ke and the, they learn. So they play all sorts of things and then they have education sessions on different topics, uh, Ramayana, Mahabharat, uh, Gita, so some of those topics like karmaneva adhikaraste mafale shukadachana. There could be discussion on things like that. Mm. And our Hindu uh, values, what are the important principles of our Hindu dharma? Mm. All sorts of those discussions take place. And most important thing is they are taught by the counselors. The discussion is done with the guidance of the counselors who are university going kids who have young. been campers, mm -hmm. who have been young campers themselves. 
<laughs> so they know how to communicate with yeah. these youth. Of course. I mean, you and I cannot communicate yes. with them. No, no, I think that's so true. And I think with the growth of the Hindu population and there's a thirst, I think, and you, you, you're sensing that, I'm sure, for the youngsters to connect with their heritage. And yeah. I think, um, are you seeing that more and more now, people wanting to connect with their heritage? And also, would you say, Swaji, that by connecting with their heritage is what builds their self-confidence to know who they are Yes. Is that something you would agree with? Oh, so true, so true. So in fact, in our camp, Anjaniji, we have three generations of people now. Mm. So for example, you know, Ramesh Butada ji, his son, Rishi Butada, who himself is now CEO of a company. Yeah. And now his kid, his kid is coming to the camp and he is so passionate that he would not miss anything. Wow. He would not go to India unless he knows he will be back for the camp. Our Amit Bhandari ji, yeah. who told us they, plan, they go for vacations, but they have to tailor their vacations around the camp dates. So, so that tells you. Yeah. So now we have third generation of youth. Yeah. So these people now they realize the value they got out of the camp. Yeah. And apparently they want to pass them down to their younger generation. Perfect, perfect. That is really fantastic to know. And I think uh, the other thing I am seeing, right, there's a lot of interest about Hinduism in the world at large, especially now. Uh, we have a, you know, a vice presidential candidate who is married to a Hindu who's, you know, to, who proudly says she's a Hindu. And I assume that there'll be a lot of questions to the children in the, you know, in the uh, world at large in America about what it means to be Hindu. What are the different things? And is that something that you think these kind of camps prepare the children better? Because at what I see at our homes, we teach them how to do the pujas or whatever, or they watch it, but they are not prepared to answer larger than life questions that might come from their colleagues because they have seen maybe a vice presidential candidate. So are there ideas that you have, Subhaji, of how we can prepare our children as they are going out and the awareness is getting better? Yes. So Ranjani ji, right now in these youth camps, uh, they are not teaching, they are not going very deep into it, but I plan to do immersion camp mm -hmm. for one week or 10 days of these counselors where they would immerse them, themselves. And that is where we would have some really good scholars mm -hmm. to talk about who we are. And and people like Dr. Raj Vedam, things like that. Yeah. Debunking all the uh, bad things about yeah. our Hindu dharm and putting uh, putting the non-colonial view, the colonial view that has been really spread right. quite a bit. And sometimes you see it in academia. Sometimes you all, see it in, yeah. all over. They yeah. see this thing everywhere. Yeah. So they are going to be able to see the and understand it better. That, that, mm -hmm. that is really wonderful. And uh, actually, but the most important thing is that you are making the counselors, the young people, the second generation who has grown up here, who understands what the issues are, right? More than you and me, I think they understand exactly. what it is. And so the camps are so fun, obviously, because the children are waiting to come and become, you know, they are Hindu Americans and I think the camps address the Hindus and the Americans, you know, both aspects right. of America, right. But yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 these kids can connect with these counselors. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good part. And if they have some issues, personal issues, yeah. they can reach out, talk to them also. Yeah. So it will say community. Community. Yeah. These like-minded kids. So that is the best part of the whole thing. Okay. that they can go to ask any yeah. which they would not open to the parents right right but of course in addition to the summer camps 
Um, you have said that there are many other opportunities that are used uh, by the Hindu. Uh, people have used the campsite for many other opportunities and that might be for adults, right? Whether it is yes. to have yoga camps and uh, that is beyond the summer. Could you tell us examples of those kinds of things as well? So for example, yoga meditation retreats, they are going to be there. Yeah. And there are a lot of those. Uh, there is a couple of them planned already. All these organizations can use for their get together and their bonding. A lot of temples and organizations are going to use it for their camps and gatherings. Yeah. In fact, uh, Ranjaneji, we are. I'm so proud to tell you that we are the probably only one who have received financial contributions from so many temples. Meenakshi Temple, VPSS, BAPS just came and gave us a check for $11,000. Swami Narayan. Wonderful. So many of these temples, because they know they need youth, and that youth development can take place in the campsite. Mm. Right. So I think our mission, I mean, for all of us Hindus, of course, is to live our lives the way we want, but we also want to pass on that tradition, as we call it, it is our Rishi Rin, right? Like we have to right. definitely give the knowledge that we have. And I think we want to give that knowledge, just not just because we are Hindus, but because this knowledge is precious. It has right. in its uh, gems that help because yoga now, you know, when I came to this country, nobody knew about it or it, it was, you know, a esoteric thing. But now people have understood doing it is good for you, good for yeah. you as a person. And um, so I think this is a very, very important thing that you're doing. And I'm so glad that, um, you know, you're working to reach out to the second generation and temples particularly. I think that's a very good point that uh, they are making, you know, in contributing to this so that they can have, you know, the development of the second generation of Hindu leaders coming out uh, in the country. Yes. So yes. that is really wonderful. So if people want to use the site uh, or, you know, want to do something, how would they get in touch with you? So they can go to the Texas Hindu campsite.org and uh, they will, they can see the facilities and they can uh, send their questions or they can always call the number given on the website or they can always call me. Yeah. And my number is 832-723-1500. Wonderful, Subhashi. And I, I can almost think that uh, if somebody wants to have an unusual destination wedding in a campsite, perhaps. Yes. Yes. Have you had any? Have you had any requests so far? Uh, we expect many. Yes. <laughs> we expect <laughs> many of them would come forward. Yes, yes, I can imagine because it'll be such a fun place to do something like this, which and also very much in alignment with all the Hindu things. So we can actually, you know, do the Hindu viha the way we want to. So I can imagine you're going to have a lot of fun, unusual activities that are going to go on there. So and we also have a by the way, Govardhan Parvat. Oh wow. <laughs> so we have built one. So people can do Govardhan, Parvat, Puja and all those things wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> in the nice lake. So it's a nice uh, walking trail yeah. that people can have fun. Yeah. And I think many of our uh, rituals, pujas are all very about, very much about nature. So I am so glad that you have such a natural area where if they want to do puja in the morning in a lake, they can go do that. Right. So I think... Yes. That would be a very worshipping the trees. You know, we know that we do that and maybe we can teach our children. And in general, I think those worship will connect children to nature, which is what Hinduism is all about, right? To connect you to Paramatman is just all around. And I think that would be a beautiful Hi. thing. Hi. Any mess, final messages for our viewers who are mostly in New England? We don't have such a beautiful weather all year round that we can do it. So any special messages? So, so, one, thing, so one thing which I forgot to mention, since you mentioned about connecting with the nature, yeah, we take the cell phones away from all the kids. So they are without phones and tablets for these six days. Wow. <laughs> and they survive. They are really in unison with the nature because that is what we want them to be. Yes. To learn, yes. to talk to each other. 
Yes. I think from, especially nowadays, I'm hearing for mental health, that's the most important thing is to connect exactly. us to human beings um, and not be tied to you. But I am so impressed that the children are willing to give up their cell phones and tablets and come. I mean, so that means what you're offering must be very, very special, right? <laughs> I think they're excited to come without their phones is a testament to how amazing <laughs> your work is. So um, yes. that's a beautiful comment that you're making. Um, Subhaji, any final words? Of, first, first of all, I'd love final words of advice. I know that you have children, you have grandchildren, you have raised Hindu children and raised a Hindu community. Um, any words of advice to parents who are Hindus who are trying to raise their young children Hindu? Any suggestions for them? I think uh, these Hindu heritage youth camps, uh, they are held they were held in New England area also previously. Yeah, yeah they are. Uh, yes. Yeah. So it would be advisable to the parents of young children to, to send their kids to these youth camps. So all that shyness of the kid goes away. Mm -hmm. They become more self-confident, self-confident. They become much, much more disciplined. Mm -hmm. They learn a lot of yoga exercises and whatnot. And so it's a very good start. And, and the best thing is they will develop a network of like-minded Hindu kids, mm. which will be there forever. Absolutely, absolutely. That, that friendship is, they have. That so is that's my advice. So that way the kids remain straight. They don't go into bad habits. The, the whole ecosystem, you develop this ecosystem. So even if one kid goes in a different direction, other kids will pull him, pull him or her back. So that is the best thing uh, to keep your kids in good company. Like we say, keep the company you want. So you want to have the company of good people. That is beautiful. Actually, I remember asking one of the children who, you know, was saying that, you know, he was away from Hindu values and then got back into Hindu values and he really values it. And I said, what do you, what was the special thing that you learned? And he had a very interesting comment. He said, you know, I was told that I need to respect my parents. And, you know, often like, you know, when I talk to them, you know, speak respectfully to them. He says, before I used to argue with them. And now when I have to put my point forward, I put it in a respectful manner and they're more <laughs> open to listening to me. You know, nice. thought, what a beautiful thing to say. Yes, if you're going to touch my feet and then tell me something, I need to be very, I'm sure the parent is not going to, you know, throw a fit right away. You yes. know, going to be very open. So I think Hindu values are practical as well, you know, in, in addition to being very, um, you know, doing other things. But I thought that was yes. a very interesting very point true. that he, he brought very up. True. So, you know, we learn, I think the Hindu rituals teach us how to communicate with each other, you know, with husband, wife, father, mother, because we are a family-based culture. And I think uh, hopefully those uh, values will teach us how to you know interact with each other better and i am so glad uh, you are doing that i think that is the need of the hour every time i go to any temple or any organization they keep talking about that right how are we going to keep our second generation hindu second americans generation. who are not indians you know who are hindu americans you know connected to their culture um, yeah, that is a big that. concern and this is why so many of these temples have told me this thing that look we need this campsite to develop the youth who will run the temples. Mm. Otherwise, these temples, uh, what will happen to the temples? Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. That is so beautiful. This is, um, I think this is the thought behind so many of these temples contributing to the campsite. Yeah. Otherwise, you never see any temple contributing. Contributing back. They are fundraising themselves. So, they are yeah. fundraising themselves. Yeah, yeah, I agree with they that. They realize yeah. the value of this thing. Yes. Which I'm very proud and thankful to them. And, yeah. and we have developed very good relations with each one of them. Yes. And it's interesting that you're getting from diverse temples, right? There's a Meenakshi temple. There's a Baps, you know. So these are such different uh, sampradayas. But yes. As core they are hindu you know sampradayas and of course yes. we are all connected and i think that on hindu and uh, everybody yes that is really beautiful so Baji, 
a real, real, real humble pronouns for the vision you have. And I thank God that, uh, you know, you were able to get people finance to make this happen. You know, that's not a trivial thing. So I think it is God's work, you know, Ishwari Akariya. And I am sure that what you are going to do is going to have impact, not just for the second generation, but for generations to come. And uh, if people, I assume, are going to be inspired by what you have done, and I suspect we might see more such initiatives come up all over the country. That's what I hope for. And uh, I look forward to everybody using your campsite and um, keep us posted on interesting uh, events that are happening and also interesting ideas that come up. Um, so there is the website you said, we will put the website obviously here, but would you like to repeat the name of the website again for us? Uh, it is Texas Hindu Campsite. Very simple. Very simple. And if you Google it, it will show Texas Hindu Campsite. Right. It is in Columbus, Texas, little 65 miles away from Houston. Fantastic, fantastic. So not so far from Houston, very close. Yeah, um, only an hour away, just wow. hour and five minutes away. Perfect, perfect. Wonderful. Subhashji, I really uh, appreciate all that you have done for the world at large. I know that you have been quite the spirit behind so many good works in this world. And uh, to see that you are doing something that is quite historic, uh, quite impactful uh, for the next generation of youth is really inspiring. I thank you for your time today. Namaste. Namaste.